we are back in the Windy City at Ultimate Ninja's Naperville for the UNX Championship Series Major 2 Final. Hey everyone, I'm Evan Dollard, and with me, of course, Grant McCartney, the Island Ninja. So much action ahead, especially on the women's side, where the youth continue to set the pace. Yes, the youth rising up. Kylie Hughes at 13 years old, getting first place in the first major, back in the finals again. I'm excited to see how she does out there. But also we have Elena Borges, who was in the finals last time, did an amazing job, only one of the two people to complete the course. Will she do it again here in the Major 2 final? Now, of course, we can't overlook the veterans on the women's side as well. We got Barclay Stockett and Jesse Lebrecht. So Lebrecht in our last finals had an early exit, earlier than we all thought. It was a shocker, but she's back here in the finals, and I think she's ready for some redemption today. And we have Barclay Stockett with a third place finish in our first major, has got her some decent points, but she's looking to build on that. And a lot of excitement on the men's side as well, where we have two noticeable absences, both of whom podiumed in our first major, Drew Dreschel and Daniel Gill. But don't get me wrong, there is no lack of talent in this men's division. One of the things I'm most excited to see is the Bash Bros, Hunter Gerard and Kyle Soderman. When they get together, especially in a finals competition for speed, it's going to get crazy. Also, leading into this final, Joe Morosky has vocalized how committed he's been to training. He is focused, determined, and I really think he's going to perform out there. Well, lots of action ahead, and we kick things off with the women's division. So for more on that, let's go down to the third member of our team, Marley Caden. Thanks so much, guys. You said it. It is the day of age versus experience. Of our 10 finalists, three of them are under 15 years old today. We had seven women finish the course, and of course, those included our first, second, and fourth place finishers from the first major. Kylie Hughes, our winner of major one, is hoping to do a repeat performance, but Jesse Lebrecht made the finals today, so we'll see how she stacks up against a vet. Thanks so much, Marley. Let's take a look at the competition format. Now, the athletes are scored the farthest, the fastest. That means that their score is the time of the last obstacle completed. We got 10 competitors in this final, but only five will be moving on to our second round. So it's a best of two runs, but you got to earn that second run. And let's take a look at the course. This is what's facing the women first. Nine intense obstacles put together by Ethan Swanson, and I had a chance to get my hands on a couple of them. Let's take a look at two of the obstacles that are unique to the women's course. Starting with coming in hot. Athletes must launch from the starter's platform to the trapeze. Athletes can take as many swings as necessary on the trapeze to build momentum with a few swings, enough to hit this trampoline full force, sail over the 10-foot gap. They need to cross and clear this black line and land on the blue pad. If they come up short, it's not a completion. Now keep in mind when athletes punch off the trampoline, you want to hit it nice and tight, legs nice and tight, core engaged, lower body engaged, and punch off of it rather than absorb it. If you do, that momentum will not carry you to the landing platform. Hopefully that doesn't happen. And this is hook line and ringer. Athletes will spring off the mini tramp up to our ring and our first hook. On the back swing, they need to take the ring with them, ride that momentum up, and latch on to our second hook here. From there, they'll transition to our second ring, and the same movement applies. Unhook that ring from the hook, use your momentum to carry you, go for a ride, lock in that next one, final transition to our third ring. Build the momentum however you can to swing and land on the landing platform with both feet in the red. Now keep in mind, if you unhook the ring the wrong direction, the rope is gonna snag on the hook, and it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of energy to get it unsnagged and complete this obstacle. And up first for the women's division, Chanel Arenas takes her spot on the starting platform. At only 13 years old, she actually got first at Ninja Warehouse, her home gym, but now is the big stage, very different, being away from home. Let's see how she does. Nice deep breath, good big strides. Here. Oh, and she no. comes up short in the last step. Oh man, it is so tough to go out on, you know, an agility or balance obstacle is not where you want to go, but it could just be the nerves, you know? It could be. I mean, you see right there, she was looking solid through the first few steps, but just didn't have the momentum and the reach 
to hit that final one. Gosh, putting her head down right away. She knew that was a silly mistake, but it happens in Ninja all the time. Up next is 15-year-old Olivia Colasano. Taking off here. We can't take this first obstacle for a gimme. It's definitely, you got to be on the obstacle you're on. It's something I tell myself before I run the course. It, you can slip up anywhere, but Olivia was second place in the Austin um, location qualifier where she earned her way into this position. Very strong. I've seen her out at multiple gyms doing different events in Ninja, so she's been training a lot. Very strong on the swings on swings. Nice and composed, locked off. I love her style here. Yeah, it shows, man. I Talking to her before this competition, she was just saying if she did take home the prize money, she would immediately just quick off to say, I would use it to do more Ninja events, get more Ninja equipment, fly to more Ninja competitions. She is really committed to this sport, and uh, we're seeing it. She looks really smooth and comfortable out there. Olivia placed fifth in Major 1. So Major 2 here is a big, oh, she just makes it over the line to complete that obstacle. Man, stretching those legs out like a long jumper, and luckily her forward momentum carried her past the line. But this is her chance to earn even more points. She placed fifth in Major 1. Now she's looking to build on the points and the experience that she had to continue to rise up in the season standings. Man, those loaded ropes have a lot more drop here in the finals. Makes a big difference on using up that arm strength. She's just swinging with a straight arm. It's good to conserve. But even that rope getting caught in her leg there is just one more thing to throw off your swing. She's got to adjust. She's got a little sideways swing going. Yeah, that sideways swing is eating up a lot of her grip strength right now, just hanging out in no man's land. She's fortunate to be having that knot there. That helps. There she goes, pull back. That'll straighten her swing up. But again, a little too cockeyed on the backside pull, so it's a diagonal swing. She's got to get to that blue mat. Oh, and Olivia Colasano just reaches the end of her rope, quite literally, and that's it. Man, such a smooth run up to that point right here. Really extending her legs past the line, carrying her weight over it. Very strong upper body through these ropes. Very smooth. It's just getting to that last one, pulling back and kicking her legs slightly to a side angle, causes that swing to put her in the wrong direction. You can only hang so long on those arms before they give up. Well, Olivia obviously looking for more out of herself from that run and completed that obstacle in the semifinal. So a little bit of disappointment for sure. Making her way to the starting platform right now is Barclay Stockett. We had a chance to hear from Barclay about how she got introduced to the sport. I got into Ninja by accident. Um, I kind of wandered into a Ninja gym with a couple of my cousins. I had no idea really what it was or what it's about. Just putting my hands on the obstacles, it was so familiar to me because it was really similar to gymnastics in a lot of ways. And I was just like automatically fell in love with it. And I knew like this is about to change my life. Everybody here, uh, for the most part, I'm really good friends with. And it's like a genuine thing. And, and that's real. And it's I've never experienced anything like it. I was so glad that I qualified for the major because it means I get to keep doing these. Yeah, I think it's just to keep playing as long as I can. So that means I need to keep qualifying. Barclay's coming off a third place finish in our major one. She's on the course, looks really focused, but she's got that sparkly attitude. I'm sure she'll see a, we'll, we'll crack a smile somewhere out here on this course. Yeah, I knew she'd bust it out at some point. Nice, 
Barclay's background in gymnastics has played a great deal in her body awareness, but also that training she puts in on that upper body, she feels very comfortable hanging from her arms. Wow, that was so close. As a gymnast, she's no stranger to a trampoline, but I think she wanted to hit that a little bit harder. And she surprised herself, it looked like, coming out of that. Still making it, though, moving on. You got to shake those things off on a ninja course. Yes, I could tell by the way she came off of our pipeline obstacle, and went straight into the trampoline there coming in hot. So she's got a, a strategy to get somewhere quick. Now as a competitor, you're always looking to see, am I trying to complete everything or do I want to go as fast as I can to one certain obstacle as it sometimes can be a race. There's a lot of strategies that go into this, but everyone's got to think top five, get a second run at this course. So you got to move quick. Unless you need to tie your shoe, of course. <laughs> yeah. Barclay, I think part of her plan must have been to get here quickly or finish that obstacle, last obstacle quickly, and then now to focus up, as this could be one of the obstacles that really caused a lot of people to go down. Nice, locks it in on that first swing. The efficiency of her pullback on that last one, the rope was very taut as she pulled back and gave her a really gentle swing. Again, see how there's not much jerk in her swing. That means she's pulling the right distance backwards, very good in control. Even kicking that last leg out very far as she pointed her toes, she's keeping her whole body in control. Ooh, you saw the ring carry wow. forward a little bit on that last hook. I think she knows she got away with one there. And now Barclay faces the first of two new obstacles on this finals course. This stalactite obstacle is not easy. It's one of those things you got to decide whether you want chalk on your hands or not. Too much chalk on a smooth surface like this and it causes you to slide more but definitely sweaty hands. There's no chance of holding on to these. Yeah, you can see her whole hand takes up one stalactite. There is so little room for error. Wow, on that third one, she was sliding big time. She's fighting her way through here. Two more moves. You're allowed to use it to dismount. Oh, nice job. She rushed into that but I think she knew it was a good hold. Rings are usually a good solid hold. She's short on time though. Oh my goodness, and just comes up short, reaching for that ring. It's as though she was out of energy. She knew she had to make the move at that moment or it was gonna be over. Yes, here's that little topple, you know, finding her balance, and we see that little smile right after that, getting in the zone. I think right here she wanted a little extra height out of that. But uh, got there, so it's still moving on. And then just timing out here, I think she had to rush that last obstacle. But great run out of Barclay Stockett. Well, let's go down to Marley. Let's start at the beginning of an amazing run. Just a little shy on time there at the end. But you, this last step in the Sidewinder steps gave us a little bit of a shock. Did that throw you off mentally? Um, no, I actually thought it was funny. So it was like a nice like comedy break for me. Um, made me feel a little bit looser, actually to have like had a little wobble because then it's just like a little lighthearted after that. Whew. And our first woman to tackle the two new obstacles to the finals. Will you approach them differently in your second run? Um, well, hopefully in my second run, I get to the rings in time to finish it. But um, I think the way that I went through the second to last obstacle was pretty decent. Yeah. It all looked good to us. I certainly couldn't do what you do. So go get some water, take a rest, and we'll see you for run two. Thank you very much.
And on the starting platform, our major one champion, Kylie Hughes. 13 years old. She shocked us all last time by an amazing run out there. Kylie is one of those competitors that wears her emotions on her sleeves. It's one of the reasons why she's so much fun to watch. Yeah, her and I operate the same in that regard. And this is her home gym, though. So she's done great things here in this gym. She does feel comfortable. She's younger at only 13 years old, but she does have that home court advantage feel being here at her home gym. Something noticeable about Kylie's style is that she does a lot of full extension, where Barclay Stockett has the upper body strength to spare, and Kylie might as well, but she definitely likes to conserve it on those suspended obstacles. Yes, body, different body types play out differently on the course. I like to leave straight arms when I can, saving my biceps. Barclay's got a lot of bicep muscle where she can just stay in a locked out position, which actually gives her more control. What can happen to a competitor with longer limbs is you get a little more swing and a little less body control from time to time. But Kylie shows us, hey, do it how you want. She got first place in our first major. Nice big swings, building the momentum here on coming in hot, punching that trampoline. Wow. Yeah, extending the legs and barely making over the line. Full on broad jump style, legs reaching out. That's a very technical obstacle to come off a trapeze and get a big punch out of a trampoline. It's a very technique based obstacle and man, she made it look good. Oh man, she's just already starting to slide there. Now these ropes have been adjusted from our first qualifier. There is more of a drop. This one is even further on the third one. Ooh, big miss on that. She's got to build some momentum here. Nice reach. Ah, and her grip just gave out. Oh, man, that's how the course change really plays out differently in the second round of doing the course. She's on this obstacle. It drops so far. Great control there on the pipeline. You can see the two feet as point of contact in order to absorb that impact right here. Hitting the very end of that trampoline, extending, like you said, broad jump style. But this is where she got hung up. Yes, just having those misses of the grab on the rope before, too. Every time you miss can really just bum you out. Well, hopefully that's far enough, fast enough for her to get another shot at this course. And up next, Elena Borges. Elena did an amazing job in our first major here. Seeing some of her highlights because she was so calm and composed. Kylie showing her emotions on there. Elena, it was hard to tell what she was feeling because she was so focused. Finally getting her to smile by the end of her run, but it did an amazing job getting second place overall and being only one of two competitors to make it to our buzzer in our female division. Can she do it again today? I'm ready to find out. Once again, maintaining that composure, very stoic competitor and so, so talented. Wow, that's got to play in your mind, a little slip there on the agility steps. So when you have a little slip up like that, it can cause you to think, get too nervous, excited, it can cause your hands to get a little sweaty. Every move matters. Elena doesn't quite show her emotions physically on her face, but she could be causing her hands to get a little sweaty or something on the course. It affects athletes differently. Let's see if it plays into her run here. The more she can maximize her moves on this grip gauntlet to start, the better off she'll be for those rope drops, which have proved to be devastating in this final. Oh, very close on the dismount there. Those green pads can topple over if you get too much weight to one side. Elena being one of our lighter competitors, I think it's managed to stay down. If you put someone heavier there, that could topple over, though. So two little bobbles early on, but I love the way that she makes the adjustments and continues forward. Yeah, she is very focused. You can see that she's not getting super excited or nervous, and she's really just focused on this obstacles. Rarely in the sport does everything go to plan. The athletes enter with a strategy. There's a way that they want to accomplish each and every one of these obstacles, but ultimately there is going to be something unexpected. 
Woo! Gets her <laughs> knees up. Yeah. Cannonballs her way into the landing platform. Sailing through it. Yeah, it's the one thing it's hard to teach is this idea of reacting on the course. Stuff doesn't go the way you'd hope. How are you going to react? How are you going to keep your mind focused and not freak out when something goes wrong? Because it happens more often than not on a course. You can see how much more this rope drops, especially that third one. Gosh, that's taxing. She has to actually choke up twice. A lot bigger move than the first round. Again, we see that rope get caught up behind someone's leg. Just one extra swing. But she finds her way through it, staying composed. Elena taking a beat here to catch her breath. Moving very quick, though, comparative to Barclay's run, where she took some time to even tie her shoelace before. Elena didn't seem to really speed up her heart rate too much. You won't see her breathing all that hard. She is trying, but I think it's her composure that's really keeping her heart rate down. I like this full extension right now. Building momentum in order to make the last transition to that final ring, and now the finishing platform is in reach. Goes for the dismount. Oh, no. It looks like she may have just touched down. Closely following the action and makes the call. And she's putting a lot of hard work in here on this loaded rope obstacle as it drops further and further. She has the upper body strength to make it work, though. All the way to the dismount, fighting her way through there. She's very composed here. Even if she would have stayed on her toes, she could have saved this obstacle. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Elena. Clean run, really fast, then you get to the ropes. It's been a real trouble spot for a lot of your competitors today, but you made it look easy. Were they harder than they looked? Um, I was having trouble with them, but I just made sure that I like really hold on really tight. I don't know. And then we move on to hook, line, and ringer. You had the same issue in the semis, that first ring giving you some trouble when you tried to hook it up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what is with that one. I guess I'm just really tired after doing the ropes. And how hopeful are you to make it to the second round of the finals? Um, I'm just happy that I got there and I'm, I just got to compete again. Good attitude. Go take a breath and maybe we'll see you in a bit. Thanks, Marley. And up next, Isabella Wakeham. Isabella's 15 years old. She's actually got first place in her Austin qualifier. Very strong, out of Texas. I've been to Houston with her, seeing her train very strong on the competition floor, but also very focused. Looking very controlled and strong through the first obstacles here. Big swing, nice light grab, like a nice light touch with that ring. Yeah, it just shows her body control. She's very focused, planned for these movements, and using her body and control very smooth. Now onto the pipeline. She doesn't seem rushed. She doesn't seem hurried, as if she's trying to get somewhere fast. She seems as if she's going as if she's going to complete everything. And once again, seeing that control on full display through pipeline. Another obstacle completed, looking very strong and composed right now. Here's our technique-based obstacle. Really need to punch his trampoline. Not building a huge swing right now, but hit the edge of that trampoline wow. just right. Wow. That's probably the cleanest I've seen anyone do that obstacle thus far. Krista Ganji calling the time. Choking locking up off, yeah. Choking so up, locking smooth. off on those ropes. That's how you want to do that obstacle. Oh. Ooh. Came down a little crooked there on the landing platform. Oh, no. Oh, no. Looks like that landing, she might have just rolled her ankle there. 
Her time's still going. She's still on the course. She's thinking about continuing on. But I think she knows it's really hurting her or else she'd be up and going. This is a very tough young girl. So the fact that she's not trying to pick up and move on means she's done something to her ankle. We'll see what happens here when she tries to put pressure on it. Is she going to continue on? Man, if she hits a trampoline with a hurt ankle like that, it's going to be very painful. But she's going for it, showing how determined she is to do well in this competition. Wow. I am I'm honestly cringing looking at her jumping up down on that trampoline. I'm right here with you, man. But when it comes to her arms, she is still very controlled. She must have known all she's got to do is get to her arms and stay off of her feet. But that dismount is coming ahead. I'm having a hard time lining it up. Ooh, nice, wow. reaching back, activating the core, elevating those knees, and hooking that ring. <sighs> this is what I'm worried to see, this dismount here. She's going to have to land on one leg. A little bit of an elliptical swing. Oh, slips right off and collides with the truss. She keeps her leg up, the injured one, she keeps high. But coming right here is that dismount where something goes wrong. Oh, her ankle just tips over there. That pit pillow is a landing platform, but it's also a soft landing. So she lands, it just rotates over. What determination out of Bella, though, to get up and continue it on, almost able to even complete the next obstacle anyways. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Isabella. First off, how are you feeling? You took quite a stumble off that dismount yeah. with the ropes. Yeah, um, I don't really know what happened. I just got a little turned around on the rope. And so when I went to throw the dismount, I wasn't quite on top of my feet and just rolled my ankle, I guess. And then as you were going through the course up to that point, how were you feeling about your performance? I was feeling great, um, moving faster than the first round. And I felt good. And you always say that you approach the course more from a mental than a physical standpoint. Which obstacle did you have to think the most about? Right, I um, was thinking a lot through the trampoline bounce to make sure my body was set up correctly for it. You don't want to have your chest too far back because then you'll buckle. Um, I had to think about that one a lot. And um, the sky hooks were making me nervous too. We haven't had any finishers yet, so there's still a chance that we might see you in the second run. So go in the back and we'll see how things shake down. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Marley. And looking to be our first finisher, Jordan Carr. Only 13 years old. And we're seeing a handful of 13-year-olds here competing in our Major 2 final series. The youth are rising up. I love seeing it. Let's see how Jordan does out here. Jordan trains with Joe Morofsky, who is also taking his first trip to the UNX Majors. Both of them training together this season and locking in their place for the finals. Now I could tell when she was going through those laches, she caught a little early, allowing herself to have her legs behind her. That's a technique actually we use to speed up your laches and not waste a lot of time. Oh, if a little bit lower of a grab there on the bungee, she could have maybe dismounted one swing earlier. But she has momentum to her run here. Not really taking a lot of time in between obstacles. Yeah, I like the way she's attacking this course. She's hungry for it. Rounding the corner, getting straight into it here. Doesn't really need to take too much rest. And we saw earlier, as long as you get that trampoline in the right spot, right at the edge there, didn't have a whole lot of momentum, but because she hit the trampoline exactly where she needed to, she had just enough to make it to the landing platform. Now it's time to turn on the grip. She's done some movements, but this one will really tax you. Needing to remember to choke up so you don't have to take that drop with your entire body weight. This third one's the especially far drop. Keep those legs up. Having to choke up three times and then making a fourth minor adjustment. Oh, just misses the connection to that last rope. 
It's a lot of time on this rope. Now her swing is getting crooked. She's got a lot of work ahead of her. She's going to correct the momentum of that swing in order to be able to reach up to that final rope. Now your feet are allowed on the rope, but she can get high enough to wrap them in. But it looks like her arms just give out. That's a very tough obstacle to be hanging on by your entire body weight. Yeah, that's not where you want to get hung up. All those extra swings come into play, and it really is tough to correct your swing and finish that obstacle. But looking so strong up until that point. Very fluid here on our first two movements, letting it drop, resetting on the back swing. But then again, on this last one, her swing got a little wonky. Well, that score leaves Jordan Carr on the bubble, and our three toughest competitors from the semifinals are still to come, including Maggie Owen, who's standing on the starting platform right now. Maggie Owen qualified here. She also did our first major here. This is her home gym. You know she's got to be feeling good, and you can hear the crowd really rooting for her. Interesting transition there. Got a little hung up, hanging by one hand, but is able to get both hands on it and continue on. We saw some of our competitors in the first round wanting to use that trapeze bar with a single arm grab, but you don't know until you get your hands on it that it can turn up sideways like that. And I've actually seen in the semifinals that a lot of the competitors had a problem trying to grab it with one hand. Same thing happened to her there, trying to make it quicker. No hesitation, jumping on the pipeline. I like this pace. Again, yes, she's seen this course before, so coming into these obstacles with a little bit more confidence than before. Yeah. Crowd of the home team cheering her on. Takes one extra swing, eyeing that trampoline. Hits it, plenty of room. Wow, great job. She actually had a very big swing, but released early, so it pushed her right into the trampoline so she could bounce and get plenty of lift. But these ropes have been trouble for many of the competitors ahead of her. She really needs to grab higher here on these ropes. Walking like her that. way up, man. She's got some awesome grip strength there. Good grip strength and way to maintain two points of contact on those ropes in order to make sure that her swing was headed the right direction. As she was doing that too, you notice every time she was pulling back on the rope so that she would get her swing going. Got a little wonky here though. We've seen it happen. She could reach back to correct her swing, otherwise she's gonna have to just hang tight until it straightens up. Also another technique is kicking the direction you wanna go. She's fighting her way through this. That knot is helping out. It gives her a little bit more to grip. That's the kick she wants. manages to survive that uh, obstacle. It's got to be because of the support of the crowd. Man, they wanted to see her make that. The cheers when they're in your head, hearing your family, your friends saying, you got this. She fought her way to that finishing platform. She did, and you could see her checking out her hand just then. I'm sure she's taxed right now. That was a lot of extra swings to get the momentum she needed to finish that obstacle. And that can come into play on another suspended obstacle like this. Oftentimes, athletes will get tired and then their body will show it. They'll show lack of coordination, but not here. She's still using her body and her swing in the right direction and placing the rings on very controlled. I'm very impressed with her coordination. Really lining this one up. One swing and plenty of room on the finishing platform. Again, such control even though her grip has gotten tired. Now she's coming up on the course time limit. She only has 15 seconds to complete this obstacle. Stalactites not in the semifinal, so this is the first time that Maggie Owen is seeing this obstacle. 
Big extension. Nice wow. connection of those reaches, and, and she is through. And she makes it to the landing platform just under the four minute time limit. Only the second athlete to complete that obstacle. There's that early slip up she had there, but corrects and moves on. Showing amazing talent here. Veteran moves on the ropes. Gets out of control on that last movement, but waits it out, fights it. I think the crowd really getting behind her too really helped her find her composure and gritted her way through it all the way till she rushed through this obstacle, beating the time limit. And that run will secure Maggie a spot in the top five. She will get another chance to run through this course and plenty of room to make up some time. That's what's so exciting about this UNX series style. You have that second run to put up a faster time. And on the starting platform now, Jesse Lebrecht, hometown hero. She is a coach here at Ultimate Ninjas. And as we discussed, she did not qualify for the finals in Major One. Yes, but she is so poised. She knows how to move through these obstacles. I think she's just come to show us what she's got. More than anyone, Jesse Lebrecht wants to put some points on the board. We're midway through the season at Major Two. Did not put any points up after Major One. And she's looking to change that right now. I like that smooth pullback so that she can slide her way through the to finish. As one of the heavier female competitors, the bungees will release all the way down for her to get on the landing platform smoothly. Jesse so strong, has a background in track and field. Tall, a lot of reach, and she is using that to her advantage. Now there's no trampolines in track, so we're gonna have to see how she pieces together this trampoline move here. Very good. Now the trampoline is set further back in this finals competition. You have to get a little more out of it. This is the first time those ninjas are seeing that and they're experiencing it, so you're seeing them really reach for that landing. Great job out of Jesse. It looks like Jesse knows this is going to be a tough obstacle. She's making sure to get a breather. We saw in our first major, the loaded ropes took out a bunch of female competitors. This is the big drop. Fighting there in between those two obstacles. This is where you got to keep your swing straight. Light work for Jesse. Yeah, very focused. She was so efficient with each one of those moves, making sure she was lined up before she drew back to swing and connect in the next row. She's showing out here why she's a coach, putting her techniques and her moves together here. She's catching her breath as she's got three more obstacles. There's more work to be done. Little turned around there, hung on by one hand, was able to correct, and she's off. Nice. Reaching back to lock in that ring. Good body awareness out of Jesse Lebrecht. And even there, kicking forward, sort of a blind reach for that third ring. Very good landing and control. She seems to be grimacing a bit out there to show maybe she's a little tired, but this is gonna be a straight core up, tight grip obstacle on this stalactite. Right now she's looking at 50 seconds to complete the next two obstacles. Can she be the first woman in this final to complete the course? Doesn't seem like her hands are sliding at all as she's going through these. She seems very confident, but she's still got time on the clock. But it is running down with 30 seconds left. So she's diving right into it. Got to build up some momentum here. Grimacing, screaming, I love it. Superwoman grabs his back reach. It's not over, you have to transfer over. She got 15 seconds, find that control. Final swing, makes the dismount, and she's got the buzzer. Jesse Lebrecht, the first 
athlete in our women's final to hit that buzzer. Man, with only seven seconds left, way to stay focused out there, Jesse. Now this is a little bit further jump in this finals here. He's making it, heels making it past on that landing platform. She looked worried going into these loaded ropes, but made it look simple and easy. Great body control. Again, wonderful body control. Throwing through here, dismounting with one arm. This is the first time we've seen this obstacle go down. And for her to ride it through, dismount, and run her way to the buzzer, that was a great run. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Jesse. Our very first female finisher. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. So at the beginning, a few very deep breaths from you. Tell us what was going through your mind then. Um, I get really nervous, and I just got to tell myself to relax, keep breathing through the course, um, and just keep my my technique and what I'm looking to do in check. Well, you could have fooled us. You looked very calm. As you went through, everything was pretty clean. And then you get to hook, line, and ringer. It gave you some trouble in the semis, and it tried to take you out again yeah. today. It was a tiny bit close, and I had a few little weird calls where I spun or whatever, but I felt OK. I felt in control. I just would have liked to do it a little bit smoother. And then you get to the new obstacles, the stalactites yeah. and the superwoman. Walk me through what those were like added on to the semi course. I think I put too much chalk on before the stalactites. Um, they were a little slick. I really felt it in the last two moves. I was like hanging out with everything I had. And then that one was just big, powerful moves when you're really tired. Well, a change for next time, because I am confident we will see you in the second round. Yeah. Congratulations again. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Marley. And now our final athlete in run one, Abby Clark. We caught up with Abby, and between her and her boyfriend, Joe Capo, this sport is a family affair. I got into Ninja um, about three years ago. I was a gymnast for almost 20 years through college. My boyfriend is also a full-time Ninja, and we train together, and then we also have a dog, a Border Collie, who's about two years old. And we just got started with him in agility about almost a year ago. Hello. And we haven't done any competitions yet, but he's he's doing a lot a lot of training, a lot more sequence stuff with all of his his obstacles that he's learning. And it's honestly a learning process for myself and, and my boyfriend because it's like a whole sport within itself. He's learning obstacles, we're learning agility, we're learning ninja, so it's a lot of fun. Abby Clark saying she's got 20 years of gymnastic experience. She's only 26 years old. That means there's only six years of her life she wasn't a gymnast. Lifelong athlete now dedicated to this sport and looking very strong through this first obstacle. Swinging would come very natural to a gymnast. She looks very controlled here. Feels confident even skipping right there one of the rings. To the untrained eye, you might miss those little pullbacks, which are very veteran moves to remember to do. Place finish in the semifinal, so she has to have some confidence coming into this. But keep in mind, we've added two obstacles to this women's final. Yeah, she's got a four minute time limit, so she does need to keep moving. She's gained 30 seconds with our two extra obstacles they've added, but you gotta keep moving out there on this course. Only one woman to finish this course so far, and that is Jessie Lebrecht. Abby looking to be the second as she easily makes her way through coming in hot. Now something you don't see on the gymnastics floor is the ropes. You may train that in practice, but moving through them Tarzan style, in this case Jane style, she is doing it very smooth every pullback and inching up with her arms, keeping her body going straight forward and back. Not getting a side to side swing until that last pull, but she saves it. Abby, very efficient up until this point, and that is critical, especially with this new extended course. The last three obstacles are all suspended. Every extra swing taken here is going to take out a little more grip. She needs to stay focused and have really great body control. 
Removing that ring early can be smart as long as you swing the right direction, which she does. Again, removing it will actually allow you to pull straight back. Such a clean run through hook, line, and ringer. Executed every move exactly as she intended. Now again, a downward grip like this is not a gymnastics hold that you'd be used to, but she's been training and she's making it really strong through this. Doesn't look like her hands are sliding or slipping at all. Interesting choice to go back on the obstacle. She wanted to switch up what hand goes forward, otherwise she'd have to reach across her body to that next hold. So it's actually very smart to do that. It's nice to be able to have the grip strength to spare to be able to make a correction mid-obstacle like that. And she is nearly a full minute ahead of the pace right now. As long as her grip holds out and she stays controlled on her swing, I think she's going to make it to that buzzer. Nice full extension making that reach. One more transfer here and then a swing to the finishing platform. A little bit of a sideways swing. Yep. Stay straight. Oh, oh and she's man. got it. Earning some style points on the dismount before hitting the buzzer. The second woman to complete this finals course. Abby was so composed out there on the course. Working her way through the loaded rope, stayed very straight forward and backwards and not sideways until that last swing got a little wonky, but dismounted it in time. And that's only if I'm being super critical of her because here she is on the stalactites, had enough grip to go forward, come back, fix her hand so she didn't cross over her body to make it through to this dismount right here. And here on Superwoman, she actually made really light work at this obstacle, showing her dominance as she got first in the first round and getting first again here in the second round. Yeah, so much strength to spare. Again, three suspended obstacles to finish this course, and she is in control of every single movement. Right here, nice little backswing, eyeing the finishing platform, and that's all she needed to be the second woman to hit the buzzer. So for more with Abby, let's go down to Marley Caden. I was gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> that was really scary. You thought you were gonna die on the Superwoman. On the dismount. <laughs> you did miss the landing pad. It I went did. right on the gym floor. It's all right. All did it hurt? hurt. Uh, I did hit my knee on my chin, but it's okay. You'll survive really. for run two, because we know we're gonna see you there. Yeah, I'm good. I'm ready to go. <laughs> so first place in the semis, and you don't know this yet, but you are first place in run one of the finals. Nice. Yay, <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> you go through the course so effortlessly and so clean that you almost make it look easy. What parts of it are hard to you? Because we certainly don't see that. <laughs> um, well, just in general for this whole competition, I'm really trying to push myself to go a little bit faster. I'm typically not considered a fast ninja. So um, really putting it all together one after another um, at a decent pace is was challenging me a little bit. Um, did make a funky mistake on the slag tights, but I um, was able to fix my, fix my grip on that, but that was definitely a little scary. <laughs> so even though you're standing in first, you were first in the semis, will you make changes in your second run? Absolutely, yeah. Different hand, um, different reaching, and just kind of different mindset. All right, so outside of the gym, I have to ask about your dog. You have a dog who is also a ninja. Yes. Tell us about your dog. So my dog Ace is a Border Collie. He's um, almost two years old, and... He also does agility and ninja. Um, my boyfriend and I both are ninjas, and so we wanted a dog that um, kind of followed in our footsteps and has that working drive. So we got a Border Collie, and he's learning agility, and he'll, he'll start competing just like us. So A family of ninjas, yeah. and when we open up UNX to dogs, he'll probably be our first oh, champion. He'll be so excited. <laughs> well, great. Go get some water, and Thank we you. will see you in the second round. Thank Congratulations. You so Thank you. Thanks, Marley. So here are the top five who will advance to a second run. Leading the pack is Abby Clark, but hot on her heels is Jesse Lebrack, who's looking to take the top spot. And our sixth place finisher, Elena Borges, just missing the cutoff, as well as Kylie Hughes. They were both top finishers in Major 1, not getting a second run in Major 2. And up next, the men's final. Ten of the toughest athletes in the nation go head to head. Kyle Soderman is one of the most electric athletes, and I cannot wait to see him hit this course. But we can't forget about the weatherman, Joe Morofsky. Let's see if he can make it rain. 
We're getting right to it. So to set the stage, let's go down to Marley Caden. Some amazing action from our female finalists, but now it's time for the men. The course proved extremely challenging for our competitors in the semis with only one finisher, Joe Morofsky, the only man to hit the buzzer at the end of the course. We did have three competitors make it to that final obstacle, the joust, which means several of our finalists have never attempted the final obstacle. The burly boards, the one before the joust, was where we saw so many of our competitors meet their end. The cliffhanger to the flat board and then the transition took them all out one by one, but they've had a chance at it now, so we'll have to see how it all stacks up in the finals. Thanks, Marley. Well, the men are running a different course than the women. We have eight intense obstacles and a 3.30 time limit. Yeah, and before the competition kicked off, I got to hop down and try some of these obstacles myself. Now we're going to have a look at two obstacles that are exclusive to our men's division. This first one is aptly named the Burley Boards. Starting from a tough lache to a small grab, you're going to be moving forward and backwards. You have to stop your swing, redirect as you hop along the boards. Now by the time you get to this second cliffhanger grab, it's going to be very exhausting. It's all about staying positive, working your way through it, getting to the rope, making the dismount. Just stay positive and grind your way through it. And our final men's obstacle, the joust. This one's going to be cool because you're going to bounce off the trampoline, holding on to our floating bar here. As you bounce up, you're going to utilize these two ropes as a very unstable track you're going to hook it onto. As you slide it along, getting to the end where you're going to have to dismount down onto this red platform. One big thing to watch out for, the bar. As these ropes move, this thing can slide loose and cause you to fall. I think the dismount is going to be the most challenging part. Well, the crowd is hyped, we are pumped, and on the starting platform to get things started is Hunter Gerard. Hunter Gerard, at 30 years old, he is one of the bash bros, him and Kyle Soderman, making it into this final. It's gonna be electric. Now you see, he preloaded that as though he was trying to connect directly from the bar to the rings, but thought, thought differently of it. If these athletes just had time to play on the course, they would be nailing those moves every time. But again, he's only had one run at this course, so he's just trying to see where can he save time. It looks like, yep, yeah, he was going for that preloaded swing. Didn't work out exactly right, but it did keep his swing in motion so he didn't have to take an extra one. This is where the course diverges from the women's course. This is the big old Lachaise. Yeah, from camera distance, you can't tell how large these really are. Nine and 10 foot laches. This last one having to make it underneath that bar. You can use it if you want to, but that is a huge lache to throw. Now onto the cats. This is such an unusual obstacle. The vertical motion of the grip and then traversing sideways. Yes, I'm sure that no one has been practicing this at their gym, as well as a wonky feeling dismount like this. But Hunter made it look really easy to move and get your arm out of the way and not hit it on the corner of that as you throw it at an angle is not an easy move to do, but also the distance he's traveling to get to that landing platform. Taking a beat, wondering what the time is, chalking up because he knows. Up next is the burly boards, and this obstacle, as you said earlier, is gnarly. This is burly and it is gnarly. You have got to make this grab right here. That has got to be one of the most critical moves on the course, but notice how side to side he is right now. Swing a lot. He's got to stop that swing side to side and move it forward and backward. Looks like he's trying to kick out on the upswing there to get his momentum going forward to correct that elliptical motion. And just not having a whole lot of luck, he had to go for it. He really did, oh, running out of gas. Man. And unfortunately, that's the end of Hunter's run. That was a great run out of Hunter, but the competition will be heating up. People will be going harder and faster through this course. He does make light work of this huge, awkward lache here. 
But getting into the burly boards, you've got to keep that swing to a minimum. He's getting that forward and back swing, making that really tough cliffhanger grab, but then has got to straighten himself up there, and that swing was ultimately what caused him to fall. Well, Hunter obviously was hoping for a better performance than that. We'll have to see if that holds up for him to get another shot at this course. And on the starting platform now, Michael Torres. Michael Torres is a really fun athlete to watch as he's so explosive. He also has great grip endurance, but watching him use that explosiveness as he links these obstacles here, gets a little wonky though. I think he may be using a little too much power. Notice how high he kicks his hips there, really getting a big pullback so he can slide with power and quickly through there. Yeah, I love the way he launches after Pipeline and shoots the gap, which is a tough move. Now these Lachets play to his strengths for sure, as he can really kick and power his way through him with his explosiveness. Really launching himself to that landing platform. Bit of a grimace on his face. I mean, it's just tough to tell what a 10-foot Lachey looks and feels like until you actually see it in person. These guys are making it look really easy to throw this big distance. Little bobble there. But again, who is practicing this move? It's not something you ever really get to see. It's the first time any of them are going to take this approach to getting around an obstacle. Oh. Oh, no. Really smart idea didn't fully play out. This was something I really wanted to see. If someone shoot that gap there, he makes a very quick move through our pipeline. Now working through the cat grab, slips on that left hand, but holds on with his feet. He has a great idea at the end to go around the backside here instead of using the bar to dismount, as it is in play. If he jumps far enough, he just didn't make it far enough to count. Yeah, Michael Torres looked like he was trying to just kick off that wall, avoid that awkward lache completely, and unfortunately just didn't make it. Up now, Nathan Haney, 16 years old. Nathan Haney has incredible lock-off strength. Very composed out there, loves doing ninja, has actually used his winning from different ninja competitions to buy himself a dirt bike. It's another thing he loves to do. Now I can see he was thinking that he could one arm his way through there, but it actually backfires on him. You're allowed to have incidental touch there as it's only gonna hurt you to slow you down. He stays up and in motion. Yeah, Chris Ganji gives him the all clear and he continues through. Little all over the place early on here. He's got to find some composure, collect himself, and really keep it together for the rest of this course. The ability to adjust on a course is something I think is really important. Also there, Nathan opting to skip that top pipeline. Making good time. I think this is the moment where he needs to settle in and say, okay, we're on the course. Time to settle down and get this done. Wow, interesting. On his backswing of his first lache, actually hits the starting platform, but doesn't look like it affected him at all. You could add an extra foot to these lachets, and I think he still wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, he has the distance for sure. When he's landing, almost all of his momentum is zapped, though. I wonder if there's a way that he could keep that momentum and avoid a little less time on those lachets in between them. You're going to see different athletes as they go through these big old laches, different techniques to save time swinging. Looks like he's got a, an approach to skip the last cat grab as well, but you won't know until you're on the obstacle sometimes if your plan is going to work or not. And I think he opted out, which is probably a smart decision. Now from that angle, you can tell when you're throwing that lache, your arm and shoulder flexibility has to be very high so that you do not hit that corner. This is a critical moment on the men's course because the burly boards are so taxing. Time management is key. 
The Burley boards do play to Nathan's strengths. He's a lighter competitor and has an amazing upper body grip strength. I think he's going to make this first catch and look easy as he does it. Yeah, that wingspan was on full display. Looked like he reached out and nearly grabbed a hold of it before he had released the hold behind him. Now that technique actually helps to make him not swing side to side. Now as he's trying to change his direction, he doesn't have a lot of swing to fight. This moment right here takes a strong lock off. Oh man, those fingertips just barely slipping off on him. Yeah, once again, the Burley Board's living up to their name. But Nathan, still a phenomenal run up until that point. Here in the beginning, what's going a little, little stronger than he hoped, getting twisted up. He adjusted, though, there, correcting his body position. I don't think that really taxed him more on strength as it did just time. Now, making this first grab, he looks so strong on the Burley Boards, locking it in, reaching around to the other side. Now, this move right here is the lock-off position. He was holding it, and it just gives out if he could have gotten that left hand on sooner. Minute 52 is his score. Made it to Opstel 6 of 8 and a big lineup of athletes to come, including Kyle Soderman. Kyle Soderman, half of the Bash Bros, one of the dudes I'm most excited to see hit this course. We got to catch up with him and Hunter Gerard before the competition. My biggest competition is, of course, Hunter. It probably always will at any competition because we're very opposite in styles. Kyle's way faster than I am fast and I'm stronger than he is strong. I'm a little bit faster, uh, a little bit more flowy, and he has just rock solid grip strength. Kyle and I will typically go back and forth with each other a little bit. We are very different in our styles, but I think that it works very well off of one another competing against each other. I usually will try to beat Kyle. Kyle will try to beat me. We end up pretty close most times. Definitely more of a friendship than a rivalry. Of course, we're always competing against each other, but we are really always just rooting for each other. We started the whole thing together. We started, built the gym together, trained together years and years. Every bizarre story and circumstance that is in the last four years of our lives have been together. And I love competing with him. He pushes me when I'm training. I push him when he's training. And of course, we like to have fun outside of training too. Kyle Soderman looking for some redemption. He had an early exit in our first major. We out here. We out here live. World live. World star. Let's go, Kyle. Notice those little forward kicks that he has as soon as he grabs. That allows him to not have to swing one extra time on the back. All those miniature moves help save time. One of Kyle's strengths is moving quickly through the course. Ooh, really eat that one out. Almost static reached across through there. Ooh, it almost looked like he was hoping to link those. These are big laches at nine into 10 foot and he does link it. Now onto the cats. This is an awkward obstacle. The transitions are so, so tough, but Kyle <laughs> makes it look easy. Wow, Hunter and Kyle practice laches all the time. If you follow them online, you're gonna see crazy patterns of laches, different angle dismounts that they do, and it's really paying off right now. Yeah, very fast paced. Just under a minute 10 through that first set of obstacles. Now he's staring down the barrel of the burly boards. This first grab, probably the most critical move to make. Plenty of time left, but you got to make this grab. This obstacle took Kyle out in the semifinals. He's taking a little extra time now. He doesn't want to repeat that mistake. I love it, that grunt there, focusing in. But again, we see that side-to-side -side swing. How is he going to correct that? Smart move. Kick your legs where you want to go, and it will change the direction of your swing. 
Now the toughest part two here. Wow, opening his hands up from that view. You could see how he just powered through that as his grip was opening up. That was incredible to watch. That quick one-two transition. Another primal scream out of Kyle Soderman. He is stoked right now. That is a tough obstacle. He knows he's coming out of a big success like that, but it's time to focus up because this is a very finicky obstacle here on the joust. That's the placement you want. But as he's sliding here, it's all about this dismount. Very strong under pull. And no, he's not going to hide his emotion. He is stoked. Crush the course. 10 seconds left. boy, Kyle. Right here, he proved himself. So much metal hanging on by his fingertips every step of the way. And then this move right here. Quick transition, and then immediately reaching up, barely taking a beat. Over here under the joust, you can see him leading to one side. Doesn't take much to come off of that, but he's able to pull through and make that dismount look way easier than it actually is. And Kyle's with Marley. Burley boards took you out in the semis. You still made it far enough to get to the finals, yep. and you got there, you were hype sounds, lots of yelling. Did it help you get through? Absolutely, that's kind of what I do. I, I really got to hype myself up, especially with something like a cliffhanger like that. I'm not the best at finger strength, so that's something I really got to grit out. Well, you got it today, and not to bring up a sore spot, you were last in the first major. <laughs> <laughs> was this a redemption run? Absolutely, and I think the thing that was driving me most is Ethan still hasn't picked me for one of his athlete predictions, so... That's my main motivator right now. You were just coming for Swanee with that run. Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. So you completed your our, only our second competitor of the day, including the semis to finish the course, the first we've seen in the finals. You had a nice clean run, but will you do anything different in your second run? Uh, just speed it up. That's about it. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing it done faster. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Marley. And up next, Donovan Matoyer. Donovan not only has amazing strength, but let's be honest, amazing style. Always looking good on the course. Kind of go with a Bruce Lee theme today. Got fifth in our first major. Has a lot of different strengths on the course, though. Right now it's being very speedy, but look at that lock-off strength as he moves through that obstacle. Yeah, the lock-off is so impressive. As you said, it, it exerts more strength, it exerts more energy, but it gives you more control. And that control was definitely on display throughout those two high-intensity obstacles. It's a very quick pace here, now heading into the big old Lachaise. This is just a grinding obstacle. It's one that you just have to take multiple swings and big throws. If you didn't see his qualifying run back at Traverse City Fitness, go check it out as he throws a distance on the wing nuts that was just huge. No one else even thought about skipping a wing nut. Nice job through the cats. You can see him mentally going through the obstacle even before he got on it. See that black piece you have to miss? Ooh. You're allowed to grab a hold of there. Going for the highlight reel on that dismount. Overshooting it, really. That is a big lache to toss, and he is overshooting it. It just goes to show you how much power he has. Is that lactic acid buildup that he's trying to get, get rid of there? A, lot, a little bit of a pump? You raise your hands up like that, sometimes shake it out. We see it in climbers doing a lot to try to get the blood out of your forearms as it gets to building up. Anything you can do to get a little bit more reaction time out of your fingers. Wow. He caught that really high, allowing himself to get time to lower. Very smart move there. It looks like he was going to bad hang, but what he was actually doing is raising his legs to kill his side-to-side -side swing. Now as he's starting to move forward, he doesn't have to fight that. 
There's a strong mm. lock off. Wow, he was slowly sinking, but still yet very tough to hold that lock off after all the other obstacles he's already been on. Yeah, so much upper body strength. Nice big swing here, eyeing that finishing platform, and he's got it. He's through the burly boards. One more obstacle stands between him and the buzzer, and it is the joust. Such a clever obstacle created by Ethan Swanson, the course designer here. It's a mixture of like a flying bar, but also a pipe slider. Oh! Oh, no. Looks like he could have got a little bit more height out of the trampoline because that one side just missed underneath where he needed it. As he throws this big lache here, overshoots it, almost toppling over, but he's allowed to lay on that obstacle, so no bigs there. Coming down to grabbing that cliffhanger, he doesn't even slide at all. Fingertips are locked in. Now, as we can see the mistake there, that left side just goes underneath the rope, causing him to fall to the ground, ending his run. 241 to the last obstacle completed, which is the Burley Boards. Hopefully he'll get a second run, but now taking his first run is Dave Cavanaugh. Dave Cavanaugh, 33 years old, former firefighter, East Coast, Beast Coast representer. Ooh, misses that grab, but a nice correction. Preloads that link there. It almost feels instinctual at that point because it didn't look like he was going to make the link at all. But it seems like that's just the way that he is making his way through this course. Oh! Almost looked like he was running across the ground. But no word from Chris Deganji, our course judge, so he'll continue on. What he is running across is this wall on Pipeline. Very big kipping swing. He knows the distance is large here. So he's kicking very high, past parallel on the back swing. Now this last 10 foot lache, you've got to go onto the landing platform. Makes it look easy. It's more of a grinding obstacle though. That can be taxing later on in the course. Nice finesse through the cats. Now this awkward dismount. I like that move. He held onto both bars in order to get his trajectory right only then to match his hand on that bar before swinging to the landing platform. Course designed by Ethan Swanson out here. And a lot of these obstacles, these athletes have never attempted before. But they're able to do it on their first try, in this case their second try on this course run. It is not easy to put this stuff together. With a minute and 50 seconds off the clock, Dave's trying to get psyched up for this first grab. Locks it in. How's he gonna kill this swing? There's the move. So the way he literally throws the board behind him, oh no. Ooh, it looked like he really rushed that transition to the second board. So he's working through pipeline here, takes a big leap all the way past the landing platform. Now on the burly boards, as he makes that first grab, does not slide at all, looking very strong. Has a technique of throwing the board behind him, but it still causes that side-to-side -side swing. Grabbing the corner is not gonna help him out, making it through that obstacle. Dave certainly wants another shot at the burly boards, but is a minute 11 through obstacle six going to be enough to place him top five? Up next, Jake Murray. We got a chance to catch up with him where he told us a little bit about what it's like to train in the mountains of Colorado. Currently, in, I reside in Golden, Colorado, and I'm training there you know, almost seven days a week. Um, I love it. It's high elevation training, which is huge when it comes to pretty much every aspect of training, um, largely cardio. Uh, so there's 17% less oxygen in the air, maybe a little bit less because I live at 6,000 feet up in Golden. So it, uh, I can always tell when I go down to sea level that things get a little bit easier. Jake placed second in our first major. He has a chance to really build on those points. 
He also did another qualifier at Ninja Warehouse where he got first. Didn't even need to do it. It was already qualified because of his placement in the first major. Very big pullback right there. Opting to go ahead and start to run into these obstacles. Athletes are going to start taking off little bits of time, like diving from the top of the pipeline. I like that move. I like putting your feet on the fourth one and just jumping to the landing platform. It saves time and grip strength. Jake again smart to short his grabs, allowing himself to swing forward. It's the next best move to linking your laches. Taking a couple of breaths, focusing up before the cats. Jake from Golden, Colorado, but a golden hair piece he's got on right now with that beautiful hair. Let's see how he does on this really awkward lache. I don't think he could have made it look any easier, actually. Now, I've trained a lot with Jake. I've seen him on the rock climbing walls. He does four by four trainings where he's on the rock wall for a long amount of time. He's got incredible grip strength, climbs very high grades. So I don't see him really going out due to grip strength. Oh no. Well, you spoke too soon, Grant. Jake Murray, as you said, has the grip strength. So what went wrong? It might've just been coordination. When we get a replay of that, we can see exactly what had happened. As he's flying through here in the beginning, great composure, smart moves, not wasting a lot of time. A big leap here. Jake's not afraid to go big on the course runs. Now it looks like to me he threw his lache too far forward, causing his weight to go underneath the board, peeling him out. Jake completed the cats in a minute 20. That puts him on the bubble in the five spot. But our top three competitors from the semifinals are yet to take the starting platform. And right now we have Christian Yost, 15 years old, one of the young guns out here, but very strong, also has a very strong lock-off skill where I think he's going to use that later on if he can get to the burly boards. Yeah, one of the first athletes in the semifinals to clear the burly boards. So much grip strength. And then just came up short on the joust. So he's looking to get some redemption on that obstacle, but a few to come before he'll reach that point. Man, he is scrambling through this pipeline. He had a strong pace coming out of that last obstacle and is definitely trying to keep his time down. Yeah, he is fast and he is scrappy on the course. Wow, notice how he has his chest forward, really throwing the bar behind you. When you do that, it allows you to propel yourself forward. And man, he could have thrown, if you put two, three more feet on those sachets, he still wouldn't have had a problem. Ooh, little wow. twist up on that transition there on the cat. But he saves it. Notice how you have to run and put and your again. foot around to the other side. It's a very unique motion. Clear. Great recovery from the young athlete. Taking a little time here to catch his breath. Focus up because you've got to make this big grab but really you gotta be thinking smart. It's not just the grab, it's then controlling your swing. Ooh, kicks the obstacle behind him. It looks like he needed to recalibrate, correct his swing, and a little extra swings can make a big difference on this obstacle. Now it's hard to tell the way he's coring up his body allowing to stop that swing. He's actually fighting to stop it there. He's not just a letting his body move back and forth. That's how come he can move forward right here and have no side to side motion. And there's that strength, that lock off transition. Ooh, by his toes rolling out of it on the landing platform. He's very active on the course. As soon as he got a hold of that rope, kicking immediately behind him to get some speed going to dismount. 
He's got to get some big height off the trampoline if he's going to complete this obstacle. Punches, lifts, ah, and only gets one side up, and that's not enough to lock in the bar. Christian taking almost like a helicopter or pole vault approach of how he's holding that as he jumps, just missing there. But on the cats as well, sliding down, last minute grabs on that one. And actually does it on the next one as well. But as for the Lachaise, no problem for him. These burly boards though, made it look easier than anyone else we've seen today, I think. Especially when it comes to his lock off. Right here though, need to get a little more height out of that trampoline. Just coming up short. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Christian. So we've made it to the same obstacle that took you out in the semis. Did you approach it differently this time? Yeah, the first time I had a plan, and I was going to execute it, but I didn't. The second time, I had a different plan, and I thought that I executed it pretty well, but it didn't work out. All right, well, you still got farther than a lot of the competitors that we've seen today. Let's go back to your run. You were clean up until cats. Mm -hmm. Then things got a little dicey there. Yeah, that obstacle <laughs> caused me a few troubles, but I was just happy to get through it. You know, hopefully, if I get to round three, I can clean that up a little bit, but I'm just happy to be here. It's a great event. And it looked like in the semis that you might have injured your wrist. Is it hurting you at all? No, it's not hurting me. Feeling better? Yes. You're prepared for the second run if you get there? Yes. All right, well, we'll hope to see you there. Congratulations. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marley. And up now on the starting platform is Caden Lebsack. Caden is 14 years old, one of our younger competitors, and also one of our strongest. Caden has his own home gym, Ninja Intensity, that his family has. He's always in there training. He has great lock-off strength, but also obstacle technique. Yeah, that strength allows him to be very fluid through each one of these obstacles. He is just so much fun to watch. Not racing into pipeline like we've been seeing a lot of athletes. I think he has in mind that he thinks he can clear this entire thing. Caden placed second overall in our semifinals. The only obstacle that took him out was the joust. So if he has his eye on completing the course, that is the one to beat. Again, so much power in his laches here that he's catching it almost at height level and then dropping down. It looks like he can catch it with his teeth and barely making it onto the platform there. Uh, has a little bit of an underbar pull there on the last one, really shooting his legs to the landing dismount. Little twisted up on the cats, but a good correction. Looking very calm right now. He's definitely playing this out the way he wants here. Calm and collected, deep breaths in between all obstacles. At no point was he just racing to be here. I think he knows that he can complete this course. It really is a sign of maturity to set your own pace for a course. And locking in that first grab. Nice, slow, and controlled, reaching over to grab the top of the board. Not much of an elliptical swing here, so he's gonna easily be able to make that transition, and he does. He will even do a side bump there on the ledge, just showing he's got the strength locked in. That's a lot of people who are really just struggling to hold on to that edge. And for the second time in this major, he has made it through the burly boards. Now staring down the gauntlet of the joust. Oh, not another one eaten up by the trampoline. It looks like not high enough so that one side made it over the rope, but the other side did not. Here Caden is shooting his legs to that landing platform, but just barely making it. Landing in control nonetheless. Very strong as he reaches across the ledge here. Can even shuffle to the side because he's got enough energy left in his fingertips. Now here on the trampoline, didn't really punch it, causing that right side to just go underneath the rope. 
a clear of the burly boards will secure him a second run with only Joe Morofsky behind him. The weatherman looking to bring the thunder and the lightning to this finals course. And getting the crowd involved at the same time. One of my favorite parts is catching up with Joe before this run. He is determined to show his training off. He's been training harder than he ever has, wanting to prove himself. I want to see him put that to use on this course. Joe Morofsky so strong and so fluid. He's been on many big stages, a lot of very difficult courses. Can he put it together on Ethan Swanson's Major 2 Final? Now that hop there on Pipeline looks like a simple move, but it's actually a very confident move to make. He actually decided, you know, a little hesitation there, but then going for it anyways. Ooh, almost catching it to Link. See how his legs whip forward? That's allowing his swing to generate forward, not having to stop himself and power up another move. Quick transition to the Cats. Looks like he's trying to find the right footing for the second transition. Oh! oh and whoa. Joe Borowski slips off on that third and final cat grab. That's really frustrating. Oh, man. He's already feeling it himself. He knows that's frustrating. Now, this cat grab obstacle is not something we see often. The same motion he has here as he's pushing off with his foot off of the wall to turn around is ultimately the same move you make here, except for instead of a solid wall, it's a movable pad. If you notice right there, too, his arm looks like it gets caught, not because he's tired, but it gets jammed up in there, forcing him to let go. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Joe. A tough slip right there on the end of Cats. Yeah, you know what's interesting? I was a lot faster through the Lachets, and I had a ton of chalk left, and that didn't help. I didn't think twice, you know. Um, and I was respecting the obstacle just fine. I wasn't rushing. Uh, I just, I grabbed it, something missed. One of my hands slipped off and you know, getting pulled around that obstacle, I just slid down it. I had too much chalk, I think. Cause I just remember feeling that grit and not in a good way, like the powder. And it kind of pulled it off and I thought I could save it, but man, that's, uh, that's really, really frustrating, but it's the sport, what are you gonna do? And you had said to me off camera that you really hoped there were no long laches on the course because they are not your favorite, but you went through them with such ease. Yeah, I mean, second time through, you kind of have a better game plan, and I felt really good. Man, that's so, so frustrating. It's a shame. It was a tough fall, but you still gave a great performance today. The only man to complete the course in the semifinals. <laughs> Didn't do me too much right there. Didn't give me any help. I mean, you make mistakes on the course, so that's it the nature of the sport. Yep. Next well, time. Next time. Yep. Good attitude. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks, Marley. Well, Joe, not in our top five, but these men are Kyle Soderman, the current leader with four amazing athletes gunning after his time. Now, these five athletes did not make the cut. Half of the Bash brothers, Hunter Gerard, as well as Joe Morofsky, who was in first place, dropping to 10th place. And coming up, the women's final run two, with Abby Clark in the lead and four athletes chasing after her, including Jesse Lebrecht and Barclay Stockett. We'll get it underway in just 30 seconds. I'm Brian Redard. And I'm Tori Clement. And this is, is the, the Ultifit system. system. Do you want to get better at obstacles? The UltraFit system will provide on-demand workouts where you can follow along step-by-step step as we teach you the skills necessary to take your strength to the next level. These workouts are designed for any age, any fitness level, and any ability. There will be daily workouts designed uniquely by myself and other fitness professionals to help tax not only full body strength, but your cardiovascular system through high intensity interval training and many other skills on a daily basis. The UltraFit system creates new workouts weekly on demand to fit your schedule. With UltraFit, you get different variations of workouts, all for beginner level, intermediate, and advanced. UltraFit, the only system that brings the obstacle gym to you. Order yours today.
Here it is, coming up, the women's final run two. But first, Marley has an update on Isabella Wakeham, who suffered an ankle injury in run one on the loaded ropes. Thanks, guys. The news down here is that Isabella Wakeham is unable to continue in the competition. She injured her ankle so badly in that dismount on the ropes that she's not going to be able to do a second run in the finals. She will, however, maintain that fifth place spot, so we will not have another competitor in that spot. Isabella will take fifth in the competition, which means we only have four women running this second run in the finals. Now, we've been talking age versus experience all day. We are down to just one lone teenager. Can Maggie Owen take it from the veterans? We'll see. Thanks, Marley. Well, unfortunate news about Isabella. Congrats, though, for placing fifth in this competition. And up now on the starting platform, Maggie Owen. Maggie Owen is single-handedly representing the young guns. Rise up, young gun, rise up. Throughout Major 1 and Major 2, she's easily become a fan favorite. She's just got so much energy and strength and skill, and she applies it to every step of this course. You can hear the crowd cheering for her. A little bit of home court advantage. She's from Aurora, Illinois, not too far down the road. This is her third attempt on this course. So it does have two extra obstacles from our semi-qualifiers, but this is definitely something she's starting to get used to. So I want to see what she pieces together. There's something there. Just going a little bit quicker into our coming in hot obstacle. Ooh, makes me nervous every time when they hit that trampoline so far back. But she makes it to the landing platform, now stretches her arms out a little bit before the loaded ropes. In run one, Maggie getting a little caught up trying to dismount this obstacle. Took her over a minute to complete the loaded ropes. Looking a little bit more smooth this time through. Really need to kick backwards here, not to the side at all. Good control. Oh, and just not quite enough to make that reach. And she's hung up a bit. She's a little low, but since she could kick a little bit, it allowed her to swing up a little higher. And a nice dismount. Crowd is loving it. I like the pace here. Maggie timed out at the end of stalactites, finishing that obstacle in her last run. Again, such great control, the way she hops backwards, keeping the lines taut. That allows her to swing right where she wants to go. Ooh, is that enough? Not quite. Gets another shot at it. Oh, and misses a second time. She's got to get this hooked in, and she does. Now, that's the thing that Maggie's been doing is even on the ropes earlier, she's able to build her swing from a dead hang swing on the rope or ring. It's worked out for her earlier on the ropes and yet again here on the rings. And easily makes that dismount to the landing platform. Now facing the stalactites again with a full minute on the clock. She's really set herself up well here, but actually just kind of going right by the chalk there. But her hands are not slipping either. Here's the bigger move. Wow, so much strength. Very fluid through the stalactites. Wow. She has set herself up great throughout the entire run to get here on the last obstacle with over 30 seconds still to go. So does Maggie Owen have enough in the tank to complete this course? Reaches up and grabs yes. that ring. One move away rise from a buzzer. Up, young gun, rise up! Lines it up. Drops down, swings, and she's got it. Maggie Owen hits yes. the buzzer in her second run. Awesome job, Maggie. Throughout the entirety of the course, she kept a high pace, 
but not too high where she was exhausted, able to make little corrections when necessary, great body control, also able to correct when she misses here, build up her swing with a little bit of kip on the bottom, trying to get enough height to hop that ring over, misses twice. Third time's a charm though for her as she swings up here, hopping it up and on. Great persistence out of young Maggie. It's got to feel great finishing this course in front of her home crowd. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Maggie. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. So you finished the semis. We add the two new obstacles, and you ran out of time in run one. What did you do differently this time? Faster. <laughs> and also, I didn't get caught up on the ropes this time at the very end there. Did you approach the ropes differently? Um, well, I made sure I went faster in the beginning of the course, so I wasn't as like super out of breath just from taking like too many swings that were unnecessary. Um, and then I made sure to stay straight this time because that was definitely my problem last time. And we hear that the Superwoman is pretty scary when you're all the way up there. How did it feel swinging off to this tiny landing pad? I mean, it felt weird to swing and then have to go backwards to face it. Um, but once I was up there, it was kind of more fun than I was expecting, like to just swing down to it. Well, you came in fourth in our first major, but today might be your day. You're only our third woman to finish so far today, so we'll see how the times shake out. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Marley. Up next is Barclay Stockett. Now, we've already had three finishers, so Barclay needs to finish this course if she's to podium. She has a great body awareness from her gymnastics background, but it's obvious to see her upper body strength. A lot of control when she starts to lock that in. You'll find her more often in a locked off position as she feels more controlled there. When you got the strength, use it. Little twisted up on that obstacle. Looks like she's ready to make it up though, running in between obstacles now. Oh, I don't know how controlled that slide down there was, but not touching the ground, so she's still in. Again, running between the obstacles. Nice, really sticks that landing. Third time through, that obstacle in particular, and she crushed it. Barclay, a lot of focus, but she runs with urgency, which I really like. Good control on the ropes, a little bit of an elliptical swing there. Maybe release a little early. Can she correct it to reach that final rope? Oh, oh and she no. doesn't. Gosh, just barely kicking forward and backward, causing a little bit of an elliptical swing. I know she probably felt out of her element here, though, as this move didn't go the way she thought. Kicking it and having to force it with her arms. But getting into the trampoline, feeling right at home, easily making that gap. Now here on the loaded ropes, normally you want to pull directly backwards, having a little bit of a back kick, causing that front to back swing. Now you can see it's thrown her off trajectory to get to that final grab there. She reaches out and just comes to the ground. Well, unfortunately, that means that her run one stands and she will not make it to the podium in this finals. And on the starting platform, getting hyped for her second run is hometown hero, Jesse Lebrecht. Lebrec actually completed the course in her first run, so now she just needs to do it and do it a little bit faster. Already grimacing a little bit. Now, is that just the, the nerves? Is that her exertion, or is she tired? Now, as a big ninja, I make a lot of noise on the course. So sometimes when I just get to grunting, that just means I'm ready to put 100% effort out there. Doesn't mean I'm tired, just how I sound. I'm curious to see where she's going to make it up. Quick transition into coming in hot. I like the focus, the determination, and she makes it to the landing platform. 
doing a great job. Actually, at this point with her last dismount being early enough, she is 18 seconds ahead. She's done what she needs to do. She has room to take a breather here. She does, but not too much. Like She's made up that time, but she can't take too much more time here. Otherwise, she'll lose the time that she's gained. Yeah, it's a fine line between taking a breather and letting your arms rest, but also just keeping it moving. Looking nice and strong right now. Reaching that last transition. One pull back. Little caught up right now. Yeah, she seems to be a little off. But she knows she's got to go. Oh, no. Shorting the dismount. And that secures it. Abby Clark takes the top spot at our UNX Major 2 final. Jesse was saying it there herself that she was just trying to go fast. She knew she had to go quick and complete these obstacles, doing a great job up to the loaded ropes. But I think she was just speeding her way on the dismount, and that caused her to just short it. Got to admire her going for broke and securing a second place spot. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Jesse. So congratulations. You had a beautiful run in the first run. Thank you. And then a little slip at the end there. It wasn't more of a slip. I was just really trying to go for it and not waste any energy. I knew that if I wanted to beat Abby's time, I had to make big moves and I had to go for it. And sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. And I knew I had second place. So I was like, just go for it. And like, whatever happens, happens. And that happened. I could have had a really fast time or I could have fallen early and I fell early and it's okay. Well, and I know you take a lot of pride in your work with kids, and Maggie yes. is actually your student. So yes. how proud do you feel to know that she did so well as well? Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, just knowing that she hit the buzzer, too, feels so good. So, yeah. And do you feel her coming up at your heels at all as quite a young competitor? Um, I think of her more as, like, my training partner. So um, I think it's good that we're kind of on that same level, and, like, it can be someone that I can train with and help push each other. Well, congratulations Thank on you. second place. That's incredible. Thank you. Go get some water. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Marley. And there on the starting platform is our Major 2 champion, Abby Clark. Abby Clark getting a full fun run here, a more of a victory lap, has done the hard work, and now is just out here to put on a show. A lot of times in this sport, the athletes are competing against each other, yes, but they're also competing against themselves and any previous run they've had on a course. Yes, Abby wants to get out here, maybe even try some stuff, see if she can beat her own time, really just try out. It's great practice to get out there with this high pressure and see what you can do. So far, a lot of the similar beta from her first run. Doesn't really have the pressure, though, so she's knowing she can stay at least a little calm. One thing we can't ever really tell is somebody's nerves. How do they feel on the inside? How much more are they breathing heavy? What does that do to their heart rate? But for her, she can kind of take it easy knowing she's won, but I think that she wants to still do her best. Abby with her first appearance in a major in this UNX Championship Series. And relatively new to the sport, it's got to be really exciting to come out on top ahead of a veteran like Jesse Lebrac. I think something here that plays is definitely the fact that it's a family event here with her, her boyfriend, her dog even getting into the ninja mix. They have a lot of fun doing it. Her hard training has definitely play, paid off today. Nice release on the backswing there. One and done. It's so efficient. And of course, the pressure is off. And that makes a huge difference when you're out here competing on the stage of this caliber. Yeah, confidence really plays when you're out on the course. Sometimes it just helps you to get that extra inch out of a jump or a reach. And when you're confident knowing you've already done well and you've done the obstacles before, it just really makes for a better course run. Three thirty-six is the time that put her in first, and she's looking to beat that time. 
One of the ways she can save some time here on the stalactites is remember on her first run, she reached out and had to switch what hand she went first forward. This time making the correct adjustment. Her backhand is sliding a little bit though, but she makes it. She's on course right now to beat her time. She's got to keep it moving though. Thirty-six seconds left. What a reach. Nice full extension. She's looking so strong right now. And with that final release, she will make it to the buzzer. 20 seconds ahead of her personal best. Wow, what a great run. Shaving out time and getting the victory without even having to do that run. Pressure off. She's done another great run with our fastest time in our women's final. Truly dominant every step of the way. Not going to be defeated by this course. Despite Ethan Swanson's best efforts, she will not be deterred. Abby Clark is our major two champion in the women's division. And there she is, Abby Clark in the top spot, Jesse Lebrecht in second, and Maggie Owen rounding out the top three to hit the podium. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Abby. Congratulations, <laughs> the winner of the UNX Major Two. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's crazy. <laughs> what does that feel like, knowing that you gave the most effortless runs of the course? Yeah, I felt it feels really good to kind of pull together not only just one or two effort, like really smooth runs, but ended up with a really strong one too. Um, I went in really trying to be smooth, efficient, a little bit quicker than I usually am, and. I'm really happy with how it went. And it looked like you did it all with such ease, but are these sort of like, if you could have hand-selected obstacles, would these have been your top choices, or were there ones that you typically don't like to see? Um, you know, everything I saw here was, was a lot of fun. I love the rope swings. Um, I do love cliffhangers, but they weren't in there today, but um, the slag tights were awesome. Really made me kind of think about my hand placements, whereas some of the other obstacles, I was just kind of able to work with it, but um, I loved them all. Well, congratulations Thank on you. winning and two Thank absolutely you. incredible runs. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marley. Congrats again to Abby Clark taking the top spot in the women's division. But up next, the men's run two. We'll be back in 30 seconds. We all possess an innate, savage-like instinct. Whether you want to accept that or not, Relentless, not making excuses, getting after it. There's the easy way and the born primitive way. Failing is okay because it doesn't matter if you're the lion or the gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. Born primitive, made for the modern savage. Welcome back to the UNX Major Two Men's Final. Now, before we get to the final runs, let's go down to Marley for a recap of the action so far. Thanks, guys. Run one ended with a shocking fall from Joe Morofsky, who was our only competitor that completed the course in the semifinals. In that first run of the finals, just Kyle Soderman managed to hit that buzzer at the end. But it's really anybody's game. Our dark horse in the field today is young Christian Yost. He tells me he has a solution to beat that joust obstacle, that final one he's gotten hung up on twice, and we'll see if he can do it. Round two of the men's final begins right now. Thanks, Marley. And loosening up on the starting platform right now is Dave Cavanaugh. Dave Cavanaugh had an amazing first run here, doing a great job in this final. Coming in as the only one, though, to not complete our burly board obstacle. He's wanting some redemption, I know, on that, but I know he's got the strength to finish this whole course. Agreed. He has the strength, he has the skill. It's just a matter of execution at this point. And the stakes have never been higher. So in the men's course here, it is eight obstacles, a lower time limit. Wow, what a big hop there. Lower time limit of 330. You got to get all those obstacles done in that time limit here. And not much rest as he gets into our big old laches. Yeah, 
great flexibility as he's kicking the back. He's arching really big. That saves from needing to whip too hard because you have the flexibility. One minute. Dave very focused right now, already asking for time. He wants to get it done. This cat obstacle is not to be overlooked. It has taken out a lot of our great athletes there. It's a little different, a little wonky. But he has sped his way here with only a minute and 20 seconds off the clock. He sped his way here, but he's got to make his way through this burly boards. Dave taking a quick beat here. Two more obstacles remain in this eight obstacle men's course. We have a three minute and 30 second time limit, but the time to beat is Kyle Soderman's three minutes and 20 seconds. The beginning of this obstacle is the crux, having to make that cliffhanger move, but you've got to stay focused after that as well. Locks it in. Nicely done. Lifting his legs up, trying to control that lateral swing. He does a good job, actually. Stops it pretty solid here. Has a little bit of side to side. Oh, when he hops on that side pull, though, it's making him go, wow, really sideways there. He's going to have to fight it by kicking forward and backwards. And he grits his way through it, though, even with the side swing. Wow, that's the tough move right there. And still having enough strength to grind his way, pulling up to the top. Man, that bar up top must feel like a rest, even though he's tired. Dave Cavanaugh just one reach, one rope, and swing away from completing the obstacle that has defeated him in this finals. And he's wow, got it. has got to feel like great redemption for him. Now. Dave is the only one who has not attempted this joust yet. So this is new territory for him. He's got 30 seconds left on the clock, but he really needs to hit this trampoline hard. Lifts and not enough height on one side. He can't seem to lock in that bar, hands it off to Chris Deganji. But still an impressive run out of Dave Kavanaugh. Coming on a pipeline here, taking a big leap, but seems very comfortable doing so. On the burly board, making it through that crux of that ledge grab. And on the joust, not able to get that left hand side up high enough. Let's go down to Marley, who's with Dave. A solid run, your first time making it to the joust. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. Those burly boards have, have been your arch nemesis all day long. How did you change your approach this round? You know, first times I just could not figure out how to stop getting squirrely. You know, I think I was just rushing it, trying to get by it. I said to myself, I'm just gonna hang here. I'm just gonna hang and wait it out, and it worked. Barely, but it worked. And then you get to the joust, that beast that's been taking everybody out yeah. of all day long. Had you ever seen an obstacle like that? Uh, I do a lot of similar obstacles like that with my flying bar at home. Uh, I think I just uh, was so concentrated on the boards that I forgot to overcompensate for that pull of the bicep, and I think I just reeled down a little too hard. Well, it was still a solid performance today. Made it into the finals. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks, Marley. Well, a moral victory for Dave Kavanaugh, but that will not change his placement. He'll finish in fifth. But up next, Donovan Matoyer. Donovan doing a great job in his first run, getting it all the way into our joust obstacle. Whoa! What a big way to, to finally someone who has thrown really short on that obstacle so that he could link it. It's a scary move to make, but this is the time to leave it all on the line. Kyle Soderman's time of 3.20 is still the time to beat. As he's hopping off of that pipeline obstacle with 30-some seconds off the clock, he's doing a great job. Donovan Matoyer looking loose, looking limber, and strong as usual. Oh! And the dismount, he landed on his backside. Didn't even get his legs out in front of him. What, what happened there? I think he just shorted the landing. He thought he had a little more power than, than he thought. And uh, there he goes landing, though. But he thought he was out, I think, for a second. But he's not. Time's still going. Well, a quick recovery, makes his way through Cats. As long as he can make this dismount, he's got it. He's done a great job rushing to this point, but you got to really catch yourself here and make sure you calm down a little bit. 2.30-ish? You want to know at 2.30? Yeah. 
Oh, where am I at now? You're at 125. So a quick conversation with Chris DeGangi on where the clock is at. It sounds like 2.30 is the point of no return where he wants to be heading to the Burley boards. Yeah, I'm not sure if he wants to be on the Burley boards at 2.30 or finishing them at that time, but he's got 2.30 in his mind, and he seems to be ahead of pace. So much strength. Love how he catches it, fully locked off. Again, important to kill that side-to-side -side swing. Another way to kill it is by generating force in the opposite direction, which he's doing here by kicking forward and backwards. You can still see a little side-to-side. -side. Very strong. Wow, that move right there where he's holding on with his right arm locked off. That just shows his training. Finishing that obstacle with a rollout on the landing platform. Now staring down the barrel of the joust. Again, the time to beat is 3.20. Donovan decided to bail on the headphones, focus up, one obstacle between him and that buzzer, just the joust. Oh, not again. That one side was just below the rope. Oh, man, what an awesome run here. As he's throwing, landing on his bottom there. I don't think that was part of the plan, but it'll work. Doing a great job on the burly boards, fighting his way to the landing platform. But dang if that joust wasn't short on one side yet again. The joust is going to be haunting Donovan in his nightmares, but such a strong performance, now placing top five in back-to-back -back majors. And up next, Caden Lebsack. Caden had a rough qualifying trying to get here, and New Jersey missed qualifying by one spot, tried again in Austin, and missed again. Third time was a charm, making it in Salt Lake City. But now he finds himself here in the finals. That is dedication. And he's going to need that relentlessness in order to beat Kyle. That's a common misconception about athletes on these courses, is that they don't make mistakes. It's actually very common to slip up on an obstacle or have a bad day. Caden showing his determination throughout three different qualifiers to get here. But now he's going to have to really keep this pace up if he wants to beat the 320 time set by Kyle. Together with the semifinals, this is now his third run through this course. How much does fatigue play a role in where he's at right now? Knowing his strength and endurance, I don't think that he's necessarily tired. It's more a managing of that strength and power over this course run without making any simple slip-ups. Ooh, almost got hung out to dry there on the cats, but a good correction. He's found himself in this exact position two other times. He can make it through the burly boards, but you can't overlook them. Yeah, such a good point. I mean, he is a very, very strong competitor with grip strength for days, and he makes this look so easy, and it's really not. You have to respect the burly boards. Again, with that strong lock off. Now, at this, even though he's done those twice already, it feels different when you're moving at the pace he is, finishing this with still a minute and 30 seconds left on the clock. Sizing of the joust, wasting no time. He's up and comes oh. up short again. Wow. Actually, how he gripped the pole was uneven. He was not centered. But throughout the rest of the course, made it look easy. The cat grabs that have taken out a lot of competitors. He just hopped his way through it. Again on the burly boards. Fundamental work here. Strong lock off right there as he moves underneath. But look at his hands, not evenly placed causing one side not to make it over top of the rope.
An incredible run by Caden, placing him firmly in second place. But the man he bumped is getting up to the podium right now. It's Christian Yost. Christian Yost is our, one of our young competitors. I've actually seen him going around and competing in a lot of different ninja competitions. So he's got experience, and that just showed it. But those are the moves you have to do if you want to beat Kyle's time of three minutes and 20 seconds. Christian is a man on a mission right now, blasting his way through these obstacles. He is a man on a mission, and he is the last man on the mission to beat Kyle Soderman. Wow, look how he throws the bar behind him, having his chest really high up. He almost looks like a flying squirrel. He's got so much hang time, legs behind him. Yeah, I think he's taking a deep breath here as on the cats before, he's fumbled his hands a couple times. Oh man, his hands are slipping in the exact same spot as the run one, but he's adjusting. Great work getting back on pace. Ooh, big backswing there. Wow. Launches to the finishing platform. Checking his forearm, it looks like he might have clipped it on the dismount. But a smart move here to take a breather. He's only at 1 minute 20 seconds. He is cooking. Wow. Stopping his swing, what control. He raised the knee up to stop his side-to-side -side swing. I've seen him do this obstacle, and every time it seems like he's busting out a different technique or move, he is putting a clinic on on these burly boards. Big back swing. He'll take an extra one to build the momentum he needs to get to that landing platform. Wow. Not only just speeding his way here, doing it smoothly and efficiently. You can hear his dad on the sidelines there shouting, you've got a minute 20, and that's to beat Kyle's time. As dad just wants his son to stay on pace, take a breath, make sure that you're focused for this obstacle because it's taken you out twice. So he's got 50 seconds here. He really could just take his time if his object is just to beat Kyle's time. But keep in mind, Kyle gets another run after this one, so time is of the essence. And here it is. It all comes down to this. Hit the trampoline strong. Oh, no. The right side was just short yet again. A phenomenal effort out of Christian, but that'll lock in the win for Kyle. Christian has got to be excited with that run, though, doing a great job, especially recovering here on the Cats, making quick work of this crazy dismount putting a clinic on on the burly boards. But again, the joust just cutting his run short. <laughs> Big smile on Christian's face. Phenomenal performance out of this young athlete, and we're going to see a lot more for him to come in the championship series. But there is our UNX Major 2 champion, Kyle Soderman. Knowing Kyle, he'll probably want to put a fun run on or a victory lap out here. Show off some stylish moves, I bet, or just see if he can beat his own time. This has to be a good feeling for him. With the early exit that he had in Major 1, he had something to prove, and he did just that. Oh, yeah, coming back, taking first, and now the stoke meter is full on. Oh, yeah. Come on, Kyle. With all the pressure off, this one just here is for the boys, full sin. No need to go slow here. He's already solidified the victory. This is just style points. Talking to his homie Hunter there as he rounds the corner. <laughs> I, I can hear the crowd yelling out, link him. They want to see these connected laches here. <laughs> That's Joe Morowski back there telling him to link these laches. Whoa! 
Oh! What? What? Sodi getting crazy out here with the flyaway. <laughs> and Chris DeGangi wow. escorting him off the course. He doesn't need to see any more of the shenanigans. You won. You're on the top spot in the podium. Look at that flyaway regrab. On a nine foot lache, he gets it with one hand and barely misses by his fingertips. All for the crowd. And there are your top five Kyle Soderman in first place, Caden Lebsack in second, and Christian Yost rounding out your top three. Let's go down to Marley, who's standing by with Kyle. Congratulations! Yeah, thank you. I, I mean, mean, it's kind of a started from the bottom now here kind of thing, you know? You are, I mean, you are the epitome of started from the bottom. Last Absolutely. place at the first major, small mistake, kept you in the bottom. Yep. And today, out on top with a super fast time. Yeah, no, I love it. I mean, just, I guess, don't miss the rings. That's the rule I like to stick by. It seems like a good rule, don't miss the rings. Exactly. So how excited are you to have won the second UNX major? I am super pumped. I mean, like, you can't do much better. So I'm, I'm just totally psyched right now. I can't believe it, but obviously I came out here to win, so that's what happened. And should we plan to see you again at the third major? Oh, 100%, I'll be there, no matter what. Are we gonna perform like today or like last time? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hope like today, we'll see, I guess. I hope so too, right? Yes. Nature of the sport, congratulations. Very exciting, a perfect run. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marley. A great day of action here at Ultimate Ninja's Neighborville. Congrats again to Abby Clark and Kyle Soderman, our women's and men's champions here at UNX Major 2. On behalf of Farley Caden and Grant McCartney, the Island Ninja, I'm Evan Dollard, and we'll see you at Major 3.